He said, he called a little child up there and he said, unless you become like one of these little ones, yeah. you'll in no wise enter into the kingdom of God. Yes. See, I know a little bit about prayer. My first experience with prayer and God answering it was when I was five years old. See, I grew up on the road. I grew up on a hard road. I wasn't a didn't grow up on a hard road in the world. I grew up on a hard road for the Lord. Yes. My daddy was a faith preacher. He what traveled this country by faith without money, mm -hmm. without script, without taking thought for what we were going to eat as a family yeah. Yeah. or where we were going to be clothed. But he traveled across this nation for Jesus. In churches, in tents, yeah. in brush harbors, yeah. in county parks like this, he preached Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. See, I grew up, but when I was five years old, was my first experience when Jesus became real to me. See, I don't have the testimony that Brother Romo has. I never was out in the world. I never did pick up drugs and alcohol and all those other things. I picked up this. Yes, praise the Lord. My testimony is much greater than Brother Romo's in that mine is of faith. Yes, praise the Lord. Of a lot of other people, see. But see, I look at them and I say, oh, your testimony is greater. But then they look at me and they say, oh, no. I wish I would have never went back there. Yeah. I wish I would have never stepped out into the world. But my Jesus answers prayers yeah. when they're in faith. When you become like a little child. Yeah. When you become like a little kid. I was five years old and we had our tent up in Jonesboro, Arkansas. And I done what every little kid does. What we're supposed to do, we're supposed to go to our father, right? Yes. Well, I went to my mama. And I said, Mama, I want a peanut butter and banana sandwich. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. I love some peanut butter and banana sandwiches to this day. Yes, sir. So we went. I went to her and I said, Mama, I want a peanut butter and banana sandwich. She said, Son, I don't know what to tell you. We ain't got no bread. We ain't got no peanut butter. and We ain't got no bananas. I guess you'll have to ask Jesus for it. So in my little five-year-old mind, I went running under the tent and I ran down to the altar. And I got on my knees. Just like a little child. Because I was a little child. And I went to my father. And I said, Jesus, Mama said, we ain't got no peanut butter and bananas and we ain't got no bread. How many knows Jesus knows what you have need of even before you ask him? How many knows that Jesus already prepared a table for you? Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. And as I got up for my little prayer and I sealed it with an amen, just like I'd heard Daddy do, I started toward the back of the tent. It was a tent about this size, probably, and I ran my little legs as fast as they would go to toward the back of the tent. And here... As I neared the entrance to the tent, there was a car pulling up. And I'd done something that Mama told me not to ever do. I couldn't wait. I ran up to this car because I knew. See, I had to know in my spirit and in my heart that Jesus had already answered my prayer. Yeah. 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 And as I walked up to that car or ran up to that car, Mama seen me and she started hollering at me, get away from that car. <laughs> And I done what every kid does. I ignored her. Yeah. Because I just had to see. I just had to see what my God had done. Yeah. And as the woman got out of the car, she came around to the pastor's side and she got two sacks out of the car. And in the top of it, I could see bread. I could see a loaf of bread sticking out of one bag yeah. and a stock of bananas out of the other. Yeah. And I just knew that I knew that I knew the peanut butter yeah. was in the bag as well. Yeah. She come in and she set it down on the altar and I began tearing into the bags, which Mama said don't ever do. Yeah. If 
And she said, Mama seen it. She said, Paul, stop doing that. Yeah. I said, Mama, I got to know something first. Yeah. And as I looked down in the bag, yeah. started taking stuff out, the peanut butter was all the way at the bottom. Uh, My Jesus had done prepared the way. He knew what I had need of before yeah. I asked. Yeah. And as soon as I asked, he prepared it and showed me yeah. that he answers prayers. Yeah. And this has been my walk since I was five years old. I have never went lacking anything. But I have always, if I needed something, went to the source. I went to my provider, my Jehovah God, my Jehovah Jireh. I went to him and I asked for it and he provided it. Yeah. He said, I'll give you everything you need. Yes, sir. He didn't say I'd give you everything you want. Right. Come on. I don't have everything I want, but I sure have everything that I need. Yes. I ain't never went lacking. I ain't never needed nothing because God always provided it. Yes. That's right. Glory. Hallelujah. He provided me a wife. He provided me children. Yeah. He provided me a roof over my head. Yeah. He provided me food on my table. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And sometimes I even have a little money in my pocket. Yeah. Thank the Lord. But I don't ever need anything. Praise the Lord. Because in my mind, Thank I'm you. still that five-year-old little boy. Uh -huh. See, in my spirit, I'm still that five-year-old little boy. Yeah. I know who my father is. Yes. I know how big my God is. My God is not a little small something, but my God encompasses the world. He encompasses the world. He can give you everything you need Yes. if you'll just ask for it. That's right. He's not going to give you a stone if you ask for him a loaf of bread. Come on, brother. Come on. See, prayer. Yes, sir. It's not just a saying that prayer changes things. Prayer truly changes things if it's done through faith. Amen. That's right. Preach it, brother. The book of James, it says, a, it says the prayer yeah. of a righteous man right. availeth much. Thank you. Availeth much. Yes, now, Lord. if you tell me you, that you're righteous, you, I'll say you're a liar. Because the Bible tells me that there's none righteous, no, not one. Yes. See, it's the righteousness of Jesus Christ. you got to put on him. You're supposed to be clothed in Jesus and that's when you can ask what you will and it'll be given to you. Once you put on the righteousness of Jesus, once you become clothed in his righteousness, our righteousness is what? Filthy rags. I don't care what kind of clothes you wear. I don't care what you got on your head or on your body. Your natural clothes does not impress me. What impresses me is what you're clothed in when I look into your spirit. Oh, that's right. See, in the spirit, the Holy Ghost is a revealer of men's hearts. He'll show me exactly what spirit you're of. Do you know you're supposed to know one another by the spirit? Come on. By the spirit, are you supposed to know one another? That's where the, that's where the spirit of God comes in. See, you're supposed to know me that I've got the Spirit of God on me. When you meet me, whether I'm in the pulpit or in Walmart. I don't like Walmart, but that's another story. Yeah. If you run into me on the street, you're supposed to look at me and to feel the Spirit of God and your Spirit's supposed to agree with my Spirit and you're supposed to know that I'm a God. Yeah. Now, if my spirit don't agree with you, one of us ain't. One of us has the wrong spirit, and I know what spirit I'm of. Yes, sir. That's right. See, that's where you got to get into the faith part. Yes, sir. See, you got to believe God is who He says He is. That He did all the things that He said He was gonna do. That He hung on that tree, laid in that tomb, and rose from the dead. And behold, He's alive, and He's alive forevermore. You got to believe that. With every fiber of your being, you got to become like that little child, mm -hmm. innocent. innocent. Yes. Innocent. innocent. Well, come on, faith. Unless you want to, well, there's some folks question that. They'll say, "How can I, when I'm old, how can I be born again? How can I enter back into my mother's womb and come out new?" Yeah. Because you've been washed 
made clean, made white, made pure. By what? By your own works? Uh-uh. By the blood of his testimony. By the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's how they made their garments white. That's how you become pure and holy and righteous and godly. It sounds complicated, don't it? It's not. It's so simple yes. that a fool couldn't err therein. Yeah. That's how simple the gospel is. You know who makes it complicated? Preachers. Come on. You know who makes it complicated? The flesh. Come on. You know who makes it complicated? Everybody. Come on. Jesus made it simple. Yes, he did. The gospel is simple. It's not complicated. It's not complex. It's not something you have some need of someone to teach you. Because the Holy Ghost himself is a teacher. Yes, he is. He will teach you everything you need to know. He will lead you and guide you into all truth and what righteousness? All righteousness. All truth uh, yeah. and all righteousness. All yeah. you got to desire it. Yes. you got to seek it. Amen. you got to... Another thing I'd done when I was five years old, I came out of that tent with what? An expectation yeah. Yeah. that God had already done it. Hallelujah. See, this is how faith works. A lot of folks don't realize how faith works. It's like a muscle. Yeah. The more you use it, the more you exercise it, the more stronger it becomes. There was a lady who come to a tent revival or a church meeting. It wasn't a tent revival. My dad was preaching, I don't know, 30 years ago. 30, 35 years ago. She came to the church. We were running a week revival there, brother. The very first night of the revival, this woman, as soon as my dad took the microphone, she stood up. She said, I want to testify. He said, well, go ahead. She had this big tumor on the side of her face. As she stood up, she said, I just want to thank Jesus for taking this tumor off my face. Lord. Yeah. I thank God that I don't have it anymore. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Well, everybody could see it. Uh-huh. And she'd sit down. The third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh nights, she done the same thing. Praise the Lord. Except for one night, the seventh night, she testified of it, and it was gone. Hallelujah. She had it in a in her purse, in a fruit jar, uh, a mason jar. She took it out to show yeah. everybody. That is faith exemplified. That is when you know that yeah. faith. See, faith is the substance of what? Things hoped for. Yeah. The evidence of things you can't see. It's the evidence of things not seen. Yeah. See, everybody could see that tumor. But she could see from faith unto faith. Come on. She could see what Jesus has already done. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's faith. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. Now you can stand up and say it all you want to, but unless you believe it. Come on. See, when I was five years old, I believed yeah. that that woman had peanut butter and bananas and bread. Yes, sir. The woman with the tumor, she believed. God had already healed her. And he, and he did. Because on the cross, he said, it's finished. Mm -hmm. See, he finished. You are the, the church is supposed to be, what? The finished work of Jesus. Yeah. We don't look like it. We're not walking in it. The church of the living God is supposed to be the church of the living God. Yeah. Come not on. the church of the living dead. Come on, brother. You look around the church, he called it the church of the deep freeze. I call it the church of the living dead. Yeah. They ain't got no power. Come on. They got plenty of enticing words. They got plenty of speeches that they like to give. They like to motivate people. But Paul said, I came not to you with enticing words Come of on. man's wisdom, Come but on. I came unto you with what? Power. Yeah. Glory. Power. Yeah. yeah. He came with deliverance. He came yeah. with the Holy Ghost. He yeah. came with healing. He came with power. Yeah. He came with fire. Mm -hmm. Thank you, he Lord. came with something that was greater than any words that were ever written. Mm -hmm. In demonstration. See, he didn't come with just power. He came demonstrating power. Right. Yes, sir. Amen. In power and demonstration of the Spirit. Right. 
What spirit is that? That's the spirit of God. That's the Holy Ghost. That's the same one that the church claims to have today. Come on. And yet they want to run around and backbite everybody, talk about everybody, gossip everywhere. Come on. Come on. The Holy Ghost ain't no backbiter. Come on, the Holy Ghost ain't yeah. no backstabber. The Holy Ghost yeah. ain't no gossiper. Come on. The Holy Ghost is pure, clean, yeah. holy, righteous. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And the Holy Ghost Thank is you, a Lord. deliverer. Yes, the is. Holy Ghost you, is a teacher. Thank you, the Holy Jesus. Ghost will bring you into all truth and righteousness. Right. All of it. Who failed God? We do. Come on, Jesus never failed anybody. Come on. Jesus didn't leave you. Jesus didn't leave the church. Yeah. Jesus didn't forsake it. The church left Jesus. That's right. My, my, my. Come on, brother. Preach it. I've been preaching for the last 15 years that we need to come back into the unity of the faith. That yeah. the church needs to come back in unity. Yeah. Setting aside every sin. Yeah. Setting aside every weight that yeah. has beset us. Set yes. aside everything Glory. that's turned us aside, that separated us from the power of God. Yeah. Thank you, See, Lord. they want to talk about the, oh, the revivals back in the 1900s, 1940s, and the 1912, Azusa Street, and all these other revivals. And they'll say, well, what happened? Why don't we have that today? Come on. Come on, preacher. I'll tell you why you don't have it today. We don't have it today because we walked away from our first love. Yeah. We walked away from our dedication. We walked away from the elders. Yeah. Do you know Azusa Street started because two women were praying? Yeah. Come on, That's right. And then they called a preacher and then there's three people praying. Yeah. And then it was a revival that spread like fire, healing, and power spread around the world. Yeah. Come on, preacher. Folks were praying. That's folks right. were dedicated. Yeah. Folks believed God. Come on. Right. Now folks ain't got no faith in nothing but their money. Come on, brother. They ain't got no faith in nothing but their job. They ain't got no faith in nothing but this or that or the other thing. They made idols out of everything except what they need to idol and worship in Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Come on, brother. Preach it. See, that's where you lose your faith at. My, my, my. You lost your faith because you quit praying. Come on. You lost your faith because you quit seeking God. You got lost your faith because you quit seeking truth and righteousness yeah. and holiness yeah. and godliness. Seeking Him and not yourself. Yeah. Seeking His way. Paul said, I must decrease that He will increase. Yeah. Well, let me tell you yeah. something. The church of the living dead today, they've increased in power and number, but the Jesus that was in them has decreased. Because they pushed Him down deep inside of them. Oh, my. They pushed him down. See, he's still there. Yeah. Because he ain't going to go nowhere. Going nowhere. Come on. But sin and flesh has pushed him down. My, my, my. I mean, there's churches around this country where they actually condone people swapping wives. Come on. Come on. Come on Goes preacher. on in the church. Come on. Come on, preacher. Don't stop now. Come on, brother. Tell it me. ain't God. Come on. It ain't God. My dad was preaching in a church over up, up, up in Alabama, North Alabama. And it, and this began to become revealed in the spirit that this was going on. Yeah. On. Well, the woman that pastored, it called herself an apostle. She had four or five churches around. My, my. She called up the pastor. She said, shut that preacher down. I feel his spirit all the way in Huntsville, Alabama. He's tearing my kingdom down. Come on, it's her kingdom. Yeah, come on. Because God began to reveal sin. Yes, sir. He will. She come out, the pastor come out there and he said, Brother Hayes, I'm going to have to shut you down. Sister so and so, I can't even remember her name, said to shut you down. Dad said, Well, okay. And he started to walk away and the Holy Ghost fell on him and he turned around and he said, I'm not going anywhere. He said, yeah. we're going to padlock the door. He said, I'll preach on the stoop. Yeah. Come on. Come on. He said, the revival's not over with. God ain't done, and I'm not leaving. Come on. Yeah. He said, well, we'll call the law. He said, well, I'll go out in the street and preach the same message that I'm preaching, and your people will follow me because God has delivered them. Yeah. And, but he's not done. Come on, brother. Yeah. You know what? 
The revival finished. They didn't lock the doors, and we got to finish it in the church. Come on, praise the Lord. Because you can't do nothing with God. Come on. Now see, that's the kind of boldness it's going to take to stand, and it ain't going to be flesh boldness. It's going to be the boldness and the power of God. Holy Ghost boldness. Yeah. Holy Ghost boldness. Yeah. When the power of God begins to fall on people. Yes, They're going to begin to speak the word, thus saith the Lord. And people better you listen up. Yeah. Because if you don't hear it and you don't follow it, you're going to be burned up. Oh, my, my. You're going to be burned up. I don't want to be burned up. I don't want to be burned up because let me tell you something. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It will cut you asunder. Yes, Lord. It will tear you apart. Yes, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There's all kinds of lustful eyes Come on, in the church. Yes, the it is. The pride of life Come on. in the church. Condoning all yes, kinds Lord. of abominable sins yes, in the Lord. church. Yeah. In the church. And then they yeah. want to say they're the church of the living God. Come on, brother. I beg to differ, you church of the living dead. Yeah. Come on. Bunch of zombies walking around with no power. Come on. No power. Denying the power. A former guy couldn't cast nothing off of a flea. Come on, brother. Can't, can't. These people that are possessed, Come on. sitting in the pews, they can't get delivered. Come on, brother. Come on. People stuck. Yeah. People stuck yeah. and need deliverance. Yeah. And the pastor's up there preaching a yeah. watered down version of the gospel. Yeah. Come on. That's a gospel that's not the gospel. Come on. It's another gospel. It's another gospel. But it's not the gospel. Because the there's only one gospel. Yeah. And that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's right. Amen. One gospel. One truth. One, truth. one, truth. one, truth. Yeah. one door. One door. One way. One way. And his name is what? J-E-S-U-S. Jesus. You can't get in without going through the door. Come on, brother. And if you do climb up any other way. If you happen to climb up any other way, you're still not going to get in. You're the same as a thief and a robber. And there ain't no thief or no robber going to inherit the kingdom of God. Right. It ain't going to happen. Yeah. You want to talk about faith? You want to talk about the church? You want to talk about prayer? I'm going to tell you something about Jesus. It's, he's all of that. He's all of that. Because if you've got faith, it's the faith of Jesus Christ. Yeah. If you're able to pray, he's the one making intercession for you. He's the one that knows what you have need of before you even go to ask. Before you even ask. You know why the church ain't got nothing? Come on, preacher. They didn't ask. They ask amiss. Come on. There you go. To consume it upon their own flesh. Uh-oh. Come on. To consume it upon their lust. To consume it upon what they can get. Come on, preacher. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. There was a president once, 1960. And he said, ask not what you can do for your country. Yeah. But, it, but ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. Come on. Come on. So I'm here to tell you tonight to ask not what Jesus can do for you. Come on. But ask what you can do for Jesus. Yeah. Because you're here and you're supposed to be here worshiping him. You're supposed to be here seeking him. You're supposed to be here adding to the kingdom daily. Souls. Bringing them in. He said, go out into the highways, into the hedges, into the byways. Compel them to come in. Then my house will be full. Yeah. Compel them to come in. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Oh, that's the preacher. No, that ain't the preacher. That's the church. Yeah, come on. You know what the preacher's for? The preacher's for the edification of the church. Yeah. The preacher's there to bring, to stir up the gift of God in you. Right. Come on. Amen. Y'all do believe in a body ministry, don't you? Yeah. Members in particular. Uh -huh. yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, I can't do nothing without my fingers. Come on, brother. My hand is useless without my fingers. That's right. Come on. My legs ain't gonna do me no good without no feet. Come on, brother. Come on. Come on, preacher. See, the the preacher carries the gospel with his feet. Uh huh. Best, best. How beautiful are the feet of those who carry the gospel. Yeah. See, a piece. The preacher carries the gospel. Carries it. But the preacher is not the full ministry. The ministry is the church. The body of Christ. It ain't the first church or the second church. 
It ain't the Baptist Church or the Methodist Church. It ain't the Pentecostal or the Wholeness or the Apostolic. It is the Church of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's who the church is. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The hands, the feet. See, you got preachers running around caught up in so much pride, they'll say, I am. Uh -huh. There ain't but one I am. Come on, brother. Come I heard a preacher say, I am the voice, the voice Come on. of faith and power. Come on, I am God's man of faith and power. Uh -huh. I am this and I am that. Let me tell you something, there ain't but one I am, and his name is Jesus. Yeah. You ain't nothing but the dust of the earth. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I don't care who you say you are. It don't matter to me who you say you are or who other people testify that you are. It's who Jesus testifies that you are. Yeah. And he said, we ain't nothing but the dust of the earth. Yeah. See, a lot of poor folks, they'll go and they put faith in their credentials. Come on. I'm doctor this and doctor that. Come on. I'm preacher this or preacher that. You ain't nothing. You ain't nothing. Right. The Apostle Paul said to count all those credentials. Come on. It's done. Come on, brother. It's meaningless. It's useless. Come on. It's done. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. He said he had to to win what? The excellency yeah. of the knowledge which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus our Lord. Yeah. See, that's where the excellent knowledge comes from. Uh -huh. From Jesus. Yes. Yeah. It don't come from a credential. Come on, brother. It don't come from a master's degree or a doctor of divinity or or any of those things. It comes from Jesus. Yeah. He said you have no need that any man should teach you. Because no, no yeah. the Holy Ghost will, oh, teach, Holy Ghost will you. teach you. Yeah. The Holy Ghost is the teacher. That's right. yes, is. See, get on your knees and let God be God. Yes, yeah. Church needs to get his dedication back. Yes, it does. Church needs to get the altar back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The church needs to put the altar yeah. back yes, where it goes. Yes, and I'm not talking about this physical altar. Come on. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about Jesus, the altar of the heart. Yeah. Because the heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. Yeah. It is to deceive the church. It's yeah. to deceive the people in the church. Yeah. It's to deceive the preachers. The preachers are deceived, going out and deceiving. Yeah. My, my. They're already deceived and they're going out and deceiving. My Lord. And the Bible says he'll send them a strong delusion and they'll all believe a lie and be damned. Oh, yeah. See, I don't want to be a part of that church. No. I want to be a part of the church. Yeah. I said, I want to be a part of the church that knows, that they know, that they know that Genesis to Revelations, this book is the only truth there is. That's yeah. right. Come on. Because he said, hello, I come in the volume of the book. Yes. He comes in the volume of the book. Yes. This book. Yes, sir. This book. Yeah. Everything you need to know is right here. That's right. Right. Don't be right. don't be buying all these people's self help books. Come on, brother. Hey, 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 hey. All these preachers making money off the church. Come on. Selling their book that they wrote. Come on. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. And folks think it's a Bible. Uh -huh. They treat it like a Bible. My my. Come on. Come on. I, I I've seen books. How to have a godly marriage. How to have a godly wife. Uh -huh. How to be a godly husband. Yeah. How to be godly. Let me tell you something. The Bible told you how to be a godly wife. Right. The Bible told you how to be a godly husband. Right. The Bible told you on, how to do this. Yeah. How to live holy. How to live righteous. Yeah. How to do all these things. Yeah. You don't need a self-help book, How to Be Married. He told you how. Yeah. That's right. He told you how. Amen. He told you how to raise your children. Yes, he did. In the admonition of the Lord. Yep. He told you how to build a house. Yep. Showed us how to build a house. He showed us how to save money. He showed us how to eat. He showed us how to do everything that we need to do. Everything. So what do I need another book to tell me for? I don't. I don't need another book. That's just something to sell. Some people make money off of. Yeah. Wasting your money. <laughs> Wasting God's money. Yeah. Because if you got money, it came from God. That's right. 
Amen. They know those books more than they know the Bible. They can tell you what that book says, but they can't tell you what that book says. Come on, bro. Preach it. Uh oh. Come on. Come on, bro. They can they can they can literally quote those books. Uh huh. Come on. But they can't quote the Bible. My my my. Now you tell me what's wrong with this picture. What's wrong with this picture is the devil has crept in. Yes, it did. Into the church. He crept right up in there and deceived the church. Sure did. The Bible says that if it were possible, the very elect would be deceived. Uh -huh. Come on, preacher. Bless him, Lord. And if the very elect can be deceived, don't think you can't be deceived. Uh -huh. And if the very elect might possibly be deceived, don't think preachers and pastors and churches can't be deceived. Yeah. If you think you can't be deceived, you have already been deceived. You've already deceived yourself. And that's the first step on the road to hell. It's very serious. You know, old timers used to say the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Good intentions are not going to get you anywhere. Nowhere. But Jesus will take you everywhere. Everywhere. All things that you want, need, or desire are yours. If you get in Jesus. In Jesus. In Jesus. Come on, preacher. You'll never go grow in God till you get your dedication back. That's right, my Lord. See, that's why people feel stagnant. Come on. That's why they feel left behind. Uh -huh. That's why they feel like they're sitting there on the pew getting older. Come on. My, my, my. Come on. Because that's all they're doing. Uh-huh. The water's stagnant. Come on. The water's become stagnant. They need somebody. You know, when it started, it started when the pastors back in the 80s started shutting out evangelists because of jealousy. That's right. Sure it is. Come on, preacher. That's right. They started shutting them out. Slowly but surely. And they pastors started swapping revivals. Yep. Come on. They said, we don't need the, fi the five-fold ministry. We just need the pastor ministry. And we'll operate in the five-fold. Uh-huh. We'll operate as evangelists. Uh-huh. Come we'll on. We'll operate as apostles and prophets and teachers. Yeah. Right. But we'll stay in this office because it's got a, a nice cushy job that I make a lot of money off of just sitting here. Come on. Do you know that there's churches that are paying their pastors seven figures? My Lord. Wow. Wow. There's churches. You can get a pastor job. It's a good gig if you can get it. Yeah. True. Pay a lot of money. True. But, you, but don't go in there preaching the truth. Uh -huh. They'll shut you down. Yeah. You'll lose that nice cushy job with the parsonage and the free residence and all this stuff going on. Yeah. Now don't get me wrong, I think the ministry should be took care of. But the ministry is supposed to be preaching the truth. But regardless of whether they're took care of, because their provider is Jesus. They're letting that money run that church. They're letting the money run the church instead of God run the church. Letting the people run the church instead of letting God run the church. That's right, brother. I've been preaching that for years. Right, yes, sir. There was a, yeah. a brother come to me up in Gadsden, Alabama one time. He, I had a tent up. He come up to me and he said, Brother, he said, I was a, on the on the board yeah. at this big, huge Baptist church over here. It was a Pentecostal church. I'm sorry, it was UPC. Yeah. He said, I was on the board of this church. And he said, there was a widow woman in the church. Uh. And her husband died and she became a widow and they were going to, she was a widow indeed. They were going to foreclosed on her house. Wow. He said, look, we've got enough money in the church account yeah. to pay off her house. He said, I think we should do it. The head of the board stood up and said, well, I don't think we should do that. I think we should do something else. We should do something for the church. He said, if this is not for the church, I don't know what is. This woman and her husband have been members of this church since it was the beginning. Come on. And all their tithes, my paying them money. We right? should pay off her house. Yeah. Where's the love and compassion? Come on. And the pastor said, no, I don't think we should. He said, but the Bible says, Come on now. this is what the, the, the guy that was talking to me said, I said, 
But the Bible says, and he said, I got that part out. And the pastor or head of it, whatever he was, he slammed his fist down on the table and he said, I don't care what the Bible says. We ain't going to do it. He said, I'm not a member of that church anymore. It's time to go. If we can't even help the widows and the orphans and the poor in the church, that's what the church is supposed to be there for. Right. Come on, preacher. That's what it's there for. Help the widows and orphans. Come on. That church will, will go under. Greedy. If it ain't already going under. It may be already. I don't know. Come on, greedy dog. But see, that is the kind of things yeah. that goes on in the church. Yeah. That, that, that most folks in the church don't even know went on because it went on in the back room somewhere. Yeah. See, this conversation went on in the back room. It didn't go on before the people, which is where it should have went on before. It should have been brought before the congregation. They said, we've got somebody in the church. We want to pay off their house. Put it to a vote. Do something other than say, well, I don't care what the Bible says. Come on, brother. Dangerous words. But this is what goes on in the church. It does. Exactly. Every this day. is how greedy the church is. Come on. Every day. Come on. This is not God. No. This is not God. Most preachers today, they don't even know what Jehovah Jireh is. My, my. God is my provider. Uh -huh. That's right. See, I know who the author and the finisher of my faith is. Right. I know who my provider is. Yeah. I don't look to a job. Come on, preacher. I don't look to my wife. Yeah. I don't look to... A family inheritance or whatever. Yeah. Come on. I look to him. That's right. He's my father. Amen. Just like I did when I was five years old. See, that was my first experience. And I wish that everyone was as I am and had that experience with God. Yeah. Yeah. Had that but see, you can't have that experience until you realize who your provider is. Yeah. Who's your provider? Jesus. See, you got to get there. You got to get to that point to where you realize it. Amen. Too many people don't care what this says. My Lord. They wonder why the church is hemorrhaging people. Uh huh. They better care. They wonder why. It's because they quit caring right. what the Bible says. My Lord. They lost their dedication. Yep. They lost their faith. They lost their power with God. They lost their walk. And now they don't know what to do. Well, I'm going to tell them what to do. Get your dedication back. Get that pure, righteous heart. Yeah. For God back. Come on. Put on the righteousness of God. Yeah. Put on the whole armor of God. Yeah. Begin to follow Him yeah. in spirit and in truth. Yeah. Quit following the flesh. Quit following the dollar. Quit following Come man. Yeah. And start following Jesus. Yeah. Come on. Because that's where your power's at. That's right. Come it's on. in Jesus. Amen. It ain't. I, look, I don't care. I don't. I don't give account to no man. Yeah. I give account to God. Man. You know, there's a lot of preachers gonna be standing up there before the Lord. They got blood on their hands. Oh my! Come on, brother. Preacher. They got blood on their hands because they failed to tell the people the truth. Come on! They held the truth in unrighteousness for filthy lucre's sake. Oh my! They got blood on their hands. Yes, they do. But I thank God and my Lord and my God. I thank Jesus. Yeah. That I can stand up and wash my hands of the whole thing. Yeah. And I can hold up holy hands yeah. and say, Lord, I didn't Lord. fail to tell them. I didn't fail to yeah. warn the people. Be sure your sins will find you out. Yes. Get you, back Lord. to the old path. Get back yeah. to your first love. Get back on your altar. Get back in your knees. Yeah. Begin to call on Jesus. Hey. Begin to follow him. Hey. Begin to walk in faith yeah. and power instead of in doubt. Yeah. Next time somebody speaks negative to you, speak faith to them. Faith. Used to be a common gospel. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Next time someone says to you something that is negative, come on. Do you know negative negativity comes in many different forms? Oh yeah. 
Negativity can come in love. Come on. Uh huh. Oh, sister, you look mighty well tonight, but you look kind of flush. You lie. Come on, preach. <laughs> come on, negativity. Yeah. yeah. They, 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 they snuck it right in there. Right. They did. See, snuck it right in there. Right in there. That's right. They do that. They do that. That's the devil. That is the enemy. You go to visit somebody in the hospital. Go in there speaking faith to them. Go in there and speak life to them. Don't go in there and say, "Oh, you look so bad." You just, you just, you just stuck a knife in their sickness. Made it worse. Go in there and give them encouraging words. Speak life and not death. Come out of it. Peter and John. They walked up to the lame man at the sure gate did. called Beautiful. He sure did. And said, silver and gold. Look on us, Peter said. Silver and gold have we none. Such as I have in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And the Bible says that he leapt up. He didn't, he didn't just get up. He leapt up. Yeah. And began praising God. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Let's come on, preacher. See, yes, he didn't go say, Oh, you poor thing, you don't have any money? No, 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 no. You look, you can't walk, you sick. Come on, preacher. Don't stop now. He didn't do that. You can't walk, you sick, you don't feel good. Oh, well, we going in, we going on in the church here. We got to go in here. Uh, we got to go take up our offering. No, 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 no. No. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up. Yeah. How you gonna raise the dead if you can't even raise up somebody that's sick? Come on. Come on now. I'm looking for a spoken word ministry. I'm looking for a ministry where I don't even have to lay hands on you. Come on, I just walk in among you and my shadow falls on you. Yes, sir. Come on, that's what happened to Peter. If Peter, if Peter's shadow can fall on folks and heal them. My shadow can fall on folks and heal them. Not because I'm anything, but just because I've walked into the Spirit of God. Just because I've walked into the kingdom of God with my eyes on Jesus, single up on Him. I got my eyes on Him looking to the left. I ain't looking to the right, but I'm looking straight ahead. Got my eye on Jesus. If my eye be single, my whole body, he said, would be full of light. And if my whole body is full of light, then my shadow is going to be full of light. It ain't going to be darkness. I ain't going to be no darkness in me. But it's going to heal. It's going to raise the dead. Come on. I believe it. Too many folks don't believe it. They don't believe it. See, you walk out there and let your shadow just fall on people. Or you walk up to them and you say in the name of Jesus Christ, get up out of that grave. Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. Jesus said the works that I do. And even greater works. Even greater works shall you do. So if we can do greater works, he raised the dead. He said, Lazarus, come forth. So it's time for us to say, speak to these bones that you can live and not die. You ain't dead, you're alive. Flesh will come up on the bones. Blood will start flowing back through it. Why? Because you didn't speak death, but you spoke life. You spoke in power and authority of Jesus Christ. You didn't speak in the power of man's wisdom, but you spoke in the wisdom of God. You spoke in the power of God. You spoke faith and not doubt. Amen. That's right. See, people don't believe no more because nobody spoke it to them. Come on, brother. That's right. But see, before you can begin to speak faith to them, you first got to preach against their sin. Yes. Because nothing comes without repentance. That's right. That's right. Repentance. Yeah. Repent and turn from your sins. Repent and turn from your wickedness. Repent and let God be God in your life. Yeah. Lay your life down. And you know what he said? He said, when you lay your life down, 
You're going to come up in newness of life. In newness. Old things passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Yeah. There you go. New. So if it's all new, and it's all Jesus, and it's all faith, and it's all righteousness, it's all holiness, it's all godliness, it's all everything in Jesus, it ain't got nothing to do with you. It's Jesus. See, it's all Him. You got to get your mind and your heart centered upon Him. Yeah. A refreshing, a restoration. The church of the living dead needs to become the church of the living God. Yeah. That's right. We need to straighten up. Wake up, church. The church of the living dead. Y'all listen closely now. The church of the living dead. The zombies. They don't know where they're going. They need to become the church of the living God. Because let me tell you something. If the church of the living dead don't become the church of the living God, they'd rather stay sleeping. God will go out into the streets and he'll bring in the prostitutes and the drug addicts. He'll go into the prisons and bring out the prisoners. They'll, he'll open the jail doors and there'll be people coming out. Thus saith the Lord, preaching the word of God. Yesterday they committed a crime and today they're standing in the streets saying, Thus saith the Lord God and it comes to pass immediately. He will do it. He will do it. See, the church, it's time for y'all to get up off y'all thumbs and start living for Jesus. Start walking in the power of God. Start letting God be God in each individual life. Let every man know God for himself. See, I can't, you can't get it on my coattail. See, I know where I'm going. I've got my reservations made. But you're not getting in with on what I've got. You're not getting in on my dedication. You're not getting in on my Bible reading. You're not getting in on my walk with God. You got to get in on what on your own, brother Romo. You got to get on, brother and sister, on your own. Work out your own salvation. Let every man work out his own salvation with what? With fear and trembling. Come on. Yeah. Everybody knows us talk about how much love God is. Well, God is a God of love. But God is also a God of fire. God is also a God of wrath. God is also a God of vengeance. And guess what? He will take vengeance upon the ungodly. He will take vengeance. The wrath of God will be unleashed on the wicked. Do you want to be numbered among them? But guess what? The judgments of God are going to begin where? In the house of God. Come on. That's where they got to begin. Why? Because the church is supposed to be the example. Yeah. We're supposed to be the example of how folks are supposed to live their lives. Come on, brother. Come on. That's right. And folks look at us and they say, look, I don't want to be like them. They're confused. Right. They're contrary to one another. They can't, you can't get two preachers together to agree on anything. Come on, brother. Wow. Why would I want to be part of that? Right. We're supposed to be in unity. Right. In right. unity. As one. Right. As one. As one. Mm-hmm. In the book of Acts, the Bible says that on the day of Pentecost, they were in one mind. One mind. That's right. One mind. One mind. Whose mind was that? Was that Peter's mind? James's mind? John's mind? Zebedee? Whose mind was that? It was the mind of Christ. That's right. It sure was. There was no jealousy. Larry. They were in one accord. Yeah. One accord. In one place, in one spirit, in the spirit of God. That's where they was. And guess what? The Holy Ghost, the Bible says, came in. Cloven tongues of fire. It came in as a mighty rushing wind. And cloven tongues of fire came in and set upon each and every one of them. And they began to speak with other tongues. as the, uh, uh, Unknown tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. Man. See, that's what happened. That's when the power of God came in. That's when the people began to really do something for God. That's when miracles began to occur. That's when the church was added to 3,000 the first day. And then church added to thousands daily. And it ain't stopped yet. And it ain't stopped yet. The church stopped. We stopped. Uh-huh. 
See, we're not out compelling them to come in no more. Come on, brother. We got, do you know that the churches, oh, come on, I'm about to share some secrets of some of these big mega churches. Got lazy. Uh -huh. Come on, you know what they got on their staff? Psychiatrists and psychologists. You know why they got them there? No, they got them there to deceive people. Come on. They've got them there for advertisement so they can advertise and use your own psychological makeup against you to get you to come to their church. They know it's called targeted advertising. Targeted advertising. They target black people. They target white people. They target husbands and wives of a certain age. They target this younger generation. They target the senior citizens. They've targeted everybody because they know how the mind works psychologically. That's why you don't need to have that flesh mind anymore, but you need to have the mind of Christ because he won't let you be deceived. He won't let you be led astray. He won't be let you be led by some false doctrine or false teacher or yeah. false prophet. Yeah. Amen. My sheep know my voice yeah. and a stranger they will not follow. Yeah. My sheep yeah. know my voice. That's right. And a stranger they will not follow. Exactly. That's what the word of God says. See, you've you got to have the mind of Christ, though. Yeah. See, the problem is the psychiatrist and the psychologist and the head shrinkers and all these people, they done screwed up everybody's minds. Yeah. See, they sure did. Come on. You see a certain advertisement come over your phone and you oh, look at that. That church really gets me. They don't get you. They got the psychological mind of the flesh. Come on. And then once they get you in there, they use the same psychiatrist to figure out how to get your money. Come on. Those sermons are not written by Jesus. They're written by psychiatrists. Come on, brother. They change it to prosperity. Oh, prosperity gospel, that went out a long time ago. They're still, they still preaching the same message, but it's got a psychological swing to it because they found out that they could get more of your money if they could get into your brain. Come on. Uh-oh. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Once they get into your mind, it's easy to get into your wallet. Oh. <laughs> yeah. See, once I get into your brain, I can get into everything. Yeah. Once I get into your brain, you'll give me your house, what? your car. What? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Hey, come on, preacher, preach. Come on. You'll leave me your money. You'll do all this stuff to me. Uh -huh. See, when you die, I'll get all the inheritance. You won't even give it to your kids. Uh -huh. You're going to give it to me. What? See, that's how it works. They're out there. They're, out there. They're big and huge, and they got 12,000 member churches. Two or three jets, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen million dollars. Yeah. And every year somebody dies and leaves them several million dollars. My, my. Mm -hmm. Come on. For the gospel, but it ain't for the gospel. It's for the psycho psychiatrist. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. I'm just telling you, this is what they do because this is what big business does. Yeah, that's right. They turned God's house Come on. and God's people. Into a house of merchandise. Come on. They make God's people merchandise. It's supposed to be a house of prayer. You're supposed to be on your knees, dedicated to God. You're supposed to have your eyes single upon Jesus. Not all scattered out, filled with darkness. Not all scattered out, filled with night. But it's time that preachers stand up, declare with a loud voice, declare the gospel, not be afraid, not be ashamed, and stand up and say, be sure your sins will find you out. Repent and turn. Turn from it. 
and turn back to Jesus. Yeah. It ain't too late, whoever you are. Wherever you're at, it's not too late. You've not went too far to turn to Jesus. Amen. He'll, he'll be there. Repent of your sins. Turn to Him. I believe in calling an ace an ace and a spade a spade. Sin is still sin. I don't care if it's 1960 or 2025. Sin is still sin. And righteousness is still righteousness. And it's the righteousness of God. It's the righteousness of Jesus. That's that's where your righteousness comes from. Put it on. Put it on. Lay down everything that's setting you aside from Jesus. Lay down everything that's separating you from God. I want you to lay down everything at the altar. Yes. And let God be God. Yes. Just let Him be God. Yes. Because God spoke to me mm -hmm. about four years ago. And He said, There's a line drawn that folks have, many folks have crossed. He said, It's time to either get in all the way in or get out of the way and stop hindering other folks in their walk with God. Yes. Get in or get out of the way. Because you're hindering folks from their walk with God. You're in, hindering someone else. Yeah. So either get in. There ain't, he said because you're neither hot nor cold. But you're lukewarm. I'll spew thee out of my mouth. So it's either it's time that you either go back out in the world and get cold. Get off the church pew. Yes. Because you're hindering people from coming in. Come on. Or get on fire for Jesus. On. Get on fire for Jesus. That's what I'm imploring you to do tonight. Yeah. Is get on fire for Jesus. Hey. But if you can't get on fire for Jesus. Then get back out in the world. Because the yes, there's no place for you. In the kingdom of God. If, you, if you're lukewarm. Lukewarm Christians ain't going to do nothing. But hinder somebody. Come on brother. That's all they, do. Come on now. That's on. All they gonna do. Yep. That's all they gonna do. That's all they going to do. I'm waiting on the Lord. I'm waiting on the Lord. So y'all just bear with me for a little bit. I'm waiting on Him. Bless Him, Lord. He said, he said to wait, and I'm waiting. Thank you, Lord. So I'm waiting. So let's just, let, let's just everybody just bow our heads here for just a yes, moment. Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. God, I'm waiting on you, Lord. God, I've obeyed you and delivered my soul tonight, Lord, but yes. you said to wait on you. Yes, Lord, make a way for him. And I'm waiting, Lord. God, everybody's waiting, Lord. Yes, Lord, wait on you, Lord. Yes, you, Lord, it does these things. Praise your holy name, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Make a way for me. In the mighty way. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What are the Brother and sister, over here, how long have y'all been married? You're not. How long have y'all been together? Seven years, a long time. You know, it was a divine appointment that got y'all together. Y'all might not have been in church, I don't know, but it was a divine appointment. God put y'all together for a purpose. And he said that what he's joined, no man can put asunder, no man can separate it. You know, y'all might just be friends, I don't know. It just seems like y'all are married to me in the spirit, I don't know. There's a, there's a marriage went on in the spirit somehow or another. But God has a plan in all of this. Though we may not see it and we may not understand it, there is a plan. Just keep following it. Just keep waiting on Him. Because there is a plan in it. Yes, Lord. And he's, he's got a blessing down the road. There's a blessing. It's a spiritual blessing. It's not a financial. It's not a money thing. It's a spiritual blessing. Praise the Lord. And it's not going to be very long. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Uh, 
Yes. Sister, can I pray for you? Sure. Can I pray for you? Brother Romo, you want to come up here? Yes. You've got a sincere heart. I can see it. You've got you. You're really sincere, and you want to be obedient to God. Yeah. But the enemy has really attacked you, more so in the last five weeks than any other time in your life. You just feel like you're just under a constant attack by the enemy. It's it's making it hard to sleep. It's making it hard to do anything. Everything you go to do, it's like the devil just gets in the way. Well. There's a yoke of bondage that's been, a, been a, that's attached itself to you. Now, there's somebody that's done it. They're, they're working witchcraft against you. It's a familiar spirit. We're going to break this yoke of bondage tonight. God's going to break it off of you. Sister Romo, come up here right quick. I want you to get behind her. Put your hands up, sister. That's right. And I've been coming against a lot, all of this stuff with what's going on in the world, and it's coming to life. Yeah, the enemy, the enemy is yeah, it's coming to life. Look, let me. Let me just pray for you. Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the power. Thank you for God, in power, Lord, in an anointing, Lord, in the Holy Ghost, Lord. God, I speak the word. Be loosed. Be set free. In Jesus' name. 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 Well, I feel good. Y'all feel good? I feel good. I'm going to turn you back to the Brother Romo now. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That was a good message, man. Was, whoo, all these churches, all these churches need to wake up. All the pastors need to wake up. You know, there's a difference between a, a shepherd and a hireling. And when the wolves and the sheep come in the highland, would run and flee the other way. And the shepherd would, would not. That kind of brings me to this, uh, this, I'm not going to preach. I just want to, it brings me to this uh, chapter book in the Bible, the book of Joel. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Therefore, also, now saith the Lord, turn ye even unto me with all your heart, with fasting and, and weeping and with mourning, and rend, rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth it will return and repent and leaving a blessing behind him, even the meat offers and drink offers unto the Lord your God. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, sanctify the fast. Call to Solomon assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders and gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thy inheritance to the reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? You know, I was thinking about the minister and preacher should weep between the porch and the altar. The, the church quit praying, seeking God's face. You know, the altar's always open. And uh, the ministers and the preachers and the pastors, they need to wake up. You know, because Jesus is coming back soon. You know, they all want this money thing and everything. and Not in for the souls or have compassion for the love of the brothers and sisters or pray for one another. The Bible says pray ye one for another. 
That's what happened. People don't pray for one another anymore. They don't. They give up. You know, they think about themselves all the time. What? What is it? What's in it for me? What can I get out of it? Yeah. You know, we need to pray for one another, have compassion for one another, right. and love one another. See, the love has left the church. Everybody's greedy and everybody's looking well. Look what Brother Romo's driving. Or look what Sister Romo or so and so. Look what they're wearing. They're all nick picking spirits. Uh, uh, nick picking everybody. One thing, looking at the people come into the church. And I, I've seen in the churches where, where people come into the church and, 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 and uh, got saved, got baptized, and everything, but God is still working on them and changing them. And they're talking about their dress is not long enough. Oh, and, and and got up behind the pulpit and said, you know, people need a dress right. They look like a prostitute and blah, blah, blah. And they left the church. Putting people down the way they dress and everything. Well, you know, God is working on them. And they're changing their clothes. At least they're coming to church. God God will make them, you know, she wasn't very revealing and, and everything. You know, if he ain't got a certain coat link or certain dress link or anything like that, they, they shun them and put them away. I knew some people can't grow hair, long hair. The women, you know, they might have had cancer one time. I knew this lady was in a, a, a apostolic church, and they shunned her because she had cancer, lost all her hair, and then she had a rag and trying to grow it back, and she couldn't grow it back because her hair wasn't long enough. Nick picking people, you know, and she cried and cried and cried. I can't grow my hair long, you know. And, and, and they, they shun at people, the way they dress, where they look. They don't have the love and compassion, you know. And that's what the church needs to get back on fire for God and, and have the compassion for lost souls. And Who cares what they look like, you know. God will change them when they get right and get set free. God will work on them. They get right. They dress uh, modest, pure, you know. You know, some people can't grow long hair. Women can't grow long hair. You know, some most of them churches got long hair and long dresses and got long tongues to go with it. That's the way I look at it. The tongue is the most deadliest poison there is. The tongue. It's, it's deadly, really poison, and a lot of people being killed by the tongue. The tongue. To talk about one another. Put each other down. You know, how you expect you build a brother up? In faith, you know, if a brother or somebody, a church member in church slipped and fall, and he might have went through something. He might have lost a loved one or his family members might have got hurt or sick. He might have got depressed. He slipped and fell. And they said, well, I knew he wasn't going to make it. He wasn't going to last. I knew he was just playing church. You know, they don't pray for one another. Hey, brother, you slipped and fell. Get back in the race. If you fall down, Dust your feet. Get back in the race. Get back in there. I don't care. I'm not first. If you can't win first place, at least you're in the race. You're back in the race. At least you won to finish the faith. Finish your course. Get back in there. You know? I failed many times with God. I failed, but I never gave up. I kept going on. I kept striving. And I made it. I'm overcomers. I've overcame the things in my life. I overcame all the habits I used to do. I don't do them anymore. I gave it all up. Gave it to Jesus. I gave it all over to Him. I'm a new man, new creature. I gave it all to Him. I had to work on my anger. I had a bad angry problem. Anger. I would just get so mad and angry. I wanted to go over there and cut my brother's tires one day. I got so mad at him. He was taking me to court. He's got a lot of money. He got more money than I do. I don't have any. You know why? I was so mad. I was so angry. I, I, I was spitting nails and tacks or whatever they call it. I, I began to pray. Driving down the road, I pray, Lord, bless my brother. Bless him, Lord. Bless him in his finances. You know, I started praying to release or something. All that bitterness left out the window. Driving down the truck. You know, I had peace. I said, praise God. You know what? He was trying, he's taking me to court and everything. You know what? After I signed that prayer and everything, God fought my battles. He fought my battles. He do. He fought my battles. And, I, and if, if out of anger, that would put like gasoline on fire. It wouldn't have caused anything if I went over and done all that. 
I prayed and it, it released uh, something, the bitterness that I was having. I felt love and peace. I said, Lord, bless him in his finances. Lord, bless his home and his family and everybody, Lord. Lord, just, just pour it out on him. All that bitterness left. Went out the window, went out of the way, and God knocked that thing out of the court. Dismissed it. Man, that was like God got in my corner. Fought all them lawyers. He paid the highest lawyer in Dallas, Texas. My, my sister married a millionaire. They had money. They hired the richest lawyer in Dallas, Texas, fighting a, a legal battle against me, trying to win custody over my dad. My dad was a minister, a preacher. And they wanted to put my dad in a nursing home and sell his house and throw him away like a piece of trash, fighting guardianship. I said, no, that's my dad. That's a man of God. I, I, I do everything. I prayed and fasted and prayed. And, and I didn't have that much money, but I had this lawyer... Let me pay him out. And I did. And I won the case. You had God on your side. I had God on my side fighting my corners right. and everything. And I won the case. My dad lived with me. I didn't put him in the nursing home. He came and lived with us. Right. I took care of him. He lived with me four years. I brought him to church. I got videos of him being under this tent. Singing under this tent. He loved it. He enjoyed it. When I picked up my dad the first time in the nursing home, he was so depressed. And so lonely, like just sitting there, you know, real depressed. And, and my stepmother died, and, and we didn't know he was in a nursing home. And, and she left him in the nursing home. We found out he was there, and, 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 and he was all depressed. I, I could tell that, that wasn't my dad. If, if he would have been left in the nursing home, he probably would have died. Yeah. It would have died of depression, heartbreak. Nobody loved him. Nobody cared. Nobody came and saw him. Hallelujah. But I rescued my dad. I brought him home. I brought life back into him. Yes. He loved church. He loved being in church. He loved praising the yes. Lord. He had that tambourine. He had this old tambourine. Just waved it. Every time we sing here, praise the Lord. You know? You know, he was like a stroke. But he couldn't move his right hand. He had that left hand. He just praised the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Cheered me on preaching, you know, and singing. And I miss him. I love him. I know he's in a better place. Yeah. I had dreams about him. He was in heaven. He ran to me. He was standing at the uh, Crystal River. He saw me. He saw me come running with his arms towards me. That's the most beautiful dream I had in my life. I love my dad. He was a great man of God. He had compassion. He had compassion for old souls. You know, out there in the streets, we preach out there in the streets in the ghettos out there in East Dallas, West Dallas, where the preachers never know want to go. We went to the laws, to the drug addicts, to the prostitutes, where, where people, where we need to reach sin, reach people, you know. He had a love and a compassion for the souls. You know, he went to the most worst place in America. And we reached over and saved. We... We got souls to Jesus and saved them. Brought them out of the gutters. White O's. Devils cast out of them. God delivered them. We saw a man one time walk under a tent. He had a shotgun. He kept driving around, driving around, driving around. We wonder why he was driving around. We kept playing and singing the guitar and stuff. This man came over in a tent. He brought a shotgun. He come up on the shotgun. Right before he stepped out of the tent, he dropped that shotgun right there. He came. I could smell the alcohol so strong. He, he was far away. I could just smell it. He came to the altar. And he gave his life to the Lord. And he came up. And I seen it instantly change. That man was changed dramatically. Instantly. Sobered up. God filled him with the Holy Ghost. And that man turned out to be a pastor of a church. He said he was on his way to kill his wife. And her lover, he knew they was cheating on him. He's over at the bar drinking. He said he heard the most beautiful music in his life. I was playing the guitar. He said it's more beautiful music than whatever it was playing in that night. Cause he come around. That's what draws him that music. He drawed at me. He kept going around the freeway. We well, was on the side of the freeway. He kept going up the road. The next exit, coming out on the service road, and come back around. He kept seeing us, and, and we kept on playing and playing. And we then he drove and he stopped. He said, I heard the most beautiful me. He said, I couldn't wait till that preacher stopped. 
So I could go over here and give my life to the Lord. He gave his life to the Lord. He said, I was on my way. I made up my mind. I would have been in prison the rest of my life. I was going to fix it. Go blow their brains out. I was drunk. But the Holy Ghost, God got a hold of me. If y'all wasn't there, that tent wasn't there, I would have been in prison right there. See, we stood in the gap. We knew we had a purpose to be there. And God changed that man's life. Changed his life. Jesus changed his life. A new creature changed his life. Turned to be a pastor of a church. He got him another wife, a Holy Ghost filled woman. Didn't cheat on him and everything loved him. See, you can't make people love you. If they go, let them go. It ain't worth killing them and everything. See, that's what he's wanting to do. He's going to go blow their brain, but God stopped him. And God had changed his life, filled him with the Holy Ghost. This tent, you know, this is a good tent. If it wasn't here, a lady got saved. She got baptized. Baptized out here in the lake. She got baptized. She never got baptized in Jesus' name. And I told her in the Bible, it says, it's a promise to you and to your children and men the Lord thy God shall call. It's written, God cannot lie. Once you get baptized and take on that marriage name and take his name, that's a promise to him, to you, to take. And after she got baptized, her daughter came down here and got saved. She saw her mama got it, got baptized. And she wanted to go get saved and get changed. Hallelujah. It's a promise. And her kids are coming to the Lord. They're coming back to Jesus. They're all dedicating their life to the Lord. Hallelujah. It's all about Him. He all deserves all the glory and all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. It's all about Him. Love and compassion for the lost, for the dying world. See, a lot of people don't want to step into church, but they step under a tent. You know, we can reach out to the lost, to the people who are hungry. Hallelujah. They don't have no love and compassion. All these churches are jealous of one another. We have spies come up under the ear. Want to know who's under here, what's going on. Probably out there in the darks, in the shadows, watching us and hearing us. It's all about Jesus. We're not here to get rich. We're here to win souls for the Lord. We're here to win souls for Jesus. But we know what it's like to be out there in the world and the lost and the drug addict. I was a drug addict. I was a dope head. I was in the beer joints playing the music in the world. Yeah. Living out of a suitcase. I, was, I thought I want happiness, but that wasn't happiness. Until I gave my life to Jesus. I'd come back to Him. I was a backslider for years. Never thought I'd come back to the Lord. Yeah. I can't backslide no more. I, God said, that's it. He said, I better do what he called me to do. The gifts of calling without repentance. You better do what he called you to do. The Bible says you put your hand to a plow and you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom. That's strong. That's very strong. I got to keep plowing on for Jesus. I started this race and I'm going to finish it. In Jesus' name. I love y'all. I appreciate everybody coming out. I appreciate Brother brother. Uh, Brother Paul Hayes coming out, drawing all the way from Alabama over here. That's right. six hours, you know, that's dedication, that's love, you know. A lot of people wouldn't do that, you know. Some people, you know, just won't, well, what's in it for me? Uh, uh, I got to have so much amount of money to get there. I understand all that and everything. But sometimes we step out on faith and have to trust in God. You know, if God tugs at your heart, I appreciate you, brother. That word was good, it, it fed me. I needed that. It's like a lifting up. Because sometimes we get down and we get discouraged. Our brothers and sisters in Christ, we all get discouraged. Sometimes we need to lift one another up. And the word encouraging it. It's like, you know, we're out here all by ourselves. Sometimes we feel lonely. we all here by ourselves. If anybody needs prayer, their altars are open. Always, I'm going to.